What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn about a somewhat more advanced data structure in Python called the default dict, so the default dictionary. We're going to discuss what it is, how it works, and when it could be useful. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn about default dictionaries in Python today, essentially just a data type that is very similar to a dictionary, but with a twist that we have default values so we can um, access key value pairs that don't exist yet. So we don't have to always initialize the key value pair if we don't know what the value shall be because we can just use a default value or a missing value if you want to call it that. Uh, so we can look at a very simple example here. For example, if I say my underscore dictionary equals just an empty dictionary, this is how you initialize an empty dictionary, or you can also just do it like this. Uh, so maybe let's do it like this because otherwise, actually, I'm not sure if this doesn't, if I do it like this, doesn't this actually initialize a set? I think this might be actually wrong. No, it's actually a dictionary. Okay. Um, Anyways, so this is how you initialize an ordinary Python dictionary. And what I can do now is I can print my dictionary, you can see it's empty. But if I go now, and if I try to access a field that does not exist, for example, if I want to say name or something like this, uh, I'm going to get the exception here, the error that I have a key error because name does not exist. Uh, and the same goes, of course, if I try to do something like my dict and then h and I want to increase h by 10 or something. This won't work because we don't have the key h, we don't have the key value pair where the key is h. Um, this changes when you use default dictionaries. And in order to use default dictionaries, you can just say from collections import default dict, and then you can just say my dictionary here equals default dict, and then we can pass here as a parameter the data type. And depending on the data type that we pass, we're going to have different default values, different missing values, if you want to call it that again. Um, and for example, if I say int, I can still print the dictionary and you're going to see it is an empty dictionary of class int. Um, you can see no data in it. Uh, but the interesting thing is now if I go ahead and I say my dictionary h, I'm going to get zero as a result because um, the, the key is missing, but the default dictionary assigns on demand just the default value to the field. So the interesting thing is also if I now go ahead and print a dictionary, we're going to get a different result because now I have actually this key value pair H zero. Um, and this also works, all, uh, of course, if I increase something that, that does not exist. So if I go ahead and say my dictionary, some other value equals or not equals plus equals uh, 20. Then you're going to see that I now have this some other value being equal to 20 because the default va value is zero on demand, it is initialized, and then I can just increase it by 20. And this solves the problem of constantly having to uh, check, for example, I don't know, maybe you want to keep track of some values, uh, maybe some score for person one, uh, has a score of zero, person two has a score of zero, and person three has a score of zero, and then you want to say, okay, when something happens, increase the score. The problem is if you now introduce person four, you would have to explicitly say that person four also is zero, because if you go ahead now and you say something like values, uh, person four, plus equals a score of 10, this is again, going to lead to a problem because now, of course, you uh, don't have the default value. So you would have to turn this into a default dictionary. Uh, then you don't need all of this here, then you can just get rid of all that. Uh, and you can increase the score for person four, which is going to initialize person four in the first place. Um, that is a very basic um, demonstration of what default dig does. Now we can also go ahead and do something more useful. For example, we can use that for counting elements. So let's say I have my list with a couple of values here, something like this. Uh, and then what we can do here is we can say counter equals default dict integer. And then I can just say for element in, uh, in my list, I'm going to say counter 
for this particular element is going to be plus equal to one. So very similar to what we did now uh, with the age in, uh, or with the with the score increase. But you can see now that this uh, works. We don't have to initialize it as zero first. We can just use it here. Um, actually, yeah. I mean, we can we can just go with element, or we can go with str elements to keep it professional here. This also works. Then you can see uh, that this is the result. Another thing we can do is we can use a default dictionary for grouping stuff. So if I have, for example, a list of words here, let's say I have apple, I have banana, I have uh, carrot, I have avoca uh, avocado. I hope this is how it's pronounced. Uh, broccoli and an orange. If I have these words, I can group them according to a certain uh, to to some pattern. So I can say here grouped words equals default dictionary with a type list this time. This is what we need to to group this here. We can say for word in words. I can just say that the group words um, we just want to append for the word um, for the word zero. Basically, meaning we take the first character, so A, B, C, A, B, O, and we group by this first character. So for each first character in the list, we're just going to append word. And you notice here again, if I print this, group words, we're using again append, even though we don't have a list in the first place, we don't create a list in the first place. In an ordinary dictionary, you would have to say, okay, A is an empty list, B is an empty list, C is an empty list, O is an empty list. And of course, because you don't know what's going to be part of the uh, list, you're going to have to do that for all letters from A to Z. And this can be tedious, this can be unnecessary. Now it's just creating on demand empty lists for everything that we ask for. And then we can also append stuff to that empty list without having to create that empty list in the first place. That is a nice use case. Um, and then also what I had to do recently, this is actually very useful. I had in a project that I was doing uh, a tuple list. So like this, where I basically had a list of tuples. So for example, a and the value 10 or b and the value four and a and the value five. And then maybe C, I think it was the result of some, um, some interesting some some odd database uh, select statement, and I got these tuples. And I wanted to group them, I wanted to basically reduce them, I wanted to, um, to aggregate them is the, is the proper term. So I wanted to combine A and A, I want to combine B and B and then C, in this case is uh, the only C element here, but I wanted to just say four plus one, for example, and to end up with a uh, with with group data. So it's essentially again grouping. And what we can do here again is a quite similar principle: group data equals default dec uh, dictionary of list of type list, and then for key value for every key value pair in this tuple here in this tuple list here, we're going to say group data key append value same principle. And then you have um, basically, uh, you group the data, and then you can also sum it up, obviously, so we can go and we can look at this. So this would just group the data. For example, if you want to have a list of values, but of course, you can now go ahead and say, uh, okay, sum everything up. So we can say for uh, maybe a dictionary comprehension, maybe we can say group data equals, and then uh, key and sum of v for kv in group data dot items that should that should produce this so this is quite useful and the great thing is also that you can define your own default dictionary so you can extend basically from this uh it, it has to be a class right yeah it's a class even though it's written in lowercase um we can go ahead and say here my default dictionary extending from default dictionary. And then I can just overwrite this double under method called missing. And here we can just say self key equals value equals so this is just a double assignment here saying that we're going to assign to self key and to value the same value, which is going to be the length of the key, for example. Uh, we can use this as an example. So the default value for a value 
is going to be the length of the value. So this is not just the same default value every time we now have something that is uh, more dynamic. So I get a key like hello and hello has uh, how many five characters. So five characters would be um, the integer five and five would then be the default value for hello. If I say something else, I'm going to get a different length and a different value. So I'm going to just return value here. Um, and we can test this out, we can say test equals my default dictionary, and then I can just print what the value is of test hello. And you're going to see it's five because the word hello has a length of five, if I say hi, it's going to be two. Um, and of course, you can also see that this is then listed in the dictionary itself. Uh, and you can do in this missing double under method, whatever you want. So you can say, okay, I want to have the length, I want to have a constant value is also possible. So self key equals value equals 10, then it's always going to be 10, no matter what you do. Um, or you can have some very advanced logic in here. The interesting thing is you can do all of this yourself. And the last thing that I want to show you here is we can also define this as a lambda expression or as a simple uh, constant dictionary. So if I want to say constant default dict or whatever you want to call it, I can just say default dictionary. And what I pass here is a lambda expression, uh, or technically a function, but a lambda expression is a function. And since it's so simple, we don't need to have a fancy function for this. But I can just say lambda and then some value, for example, hello world. Uh, and then if I use this dictionary, I will have. Um, so for example, if I ask what is hello, the value of hello, it's going to give me hello world because everything will have the default value, hello world. And of course, here you can also have some logic. Um, or actually, uh, no, you don't have a logic because this is a constant value. But if you want to have a logic, you can overwrite the class. And this is just a nice little useful thing, because it's quite tedious, as I mentioned in the beginning to have a dictionary where you want to keep track of stuff, but you have a different case, depending on whether you already encountered this object or not in the counting example, or in the grouping example, you know, do you append or do you create an empty list because it's the first element. So if I have um, label, label a here, uh, is this the first time I'm seeing label a and let's say the value associated with that is five. So do I have to append five to an already existing list of values? Or do I have to create a new list with five in it? This question is basically irrelevant once you have default dictionaries, because then everything is treated equally, you can just append and if it doesn't exist, it's going to automatically create a new list and then append it to that new list. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.